What's going on everybody? This is Dilmer and welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome as well. In today's video I'm going to show you how I develop an application that is going to allow me to natively translate into multiple languages. I'm going to show you this because when I came to the US I had a hard time understanding English and now, you know, after the years I understand it, but at the same time there are many applications that you could develop with this technology. Let me show you how this works. So the idea is that I can have this voice translator app as an overlay and then be speaking to somebody in a different language. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to go ahead and select continuous recognition. Hola amigos, bienvenidos a mi canal. Hoy quiero darle la bienvenida a este nuevo video con HoloLens que funciona maravillosamente. Este video va a ser un ejemplo para la gente que quiere hablar en diferentes idiomas. So you kind of get the idea by looking at the overlay. Basically, translation is going to show on the bottom. I can stop the recognition, continue the recognition. Enable translation is really helpful because you can also do a speech recognition, which is basically identify different patterns, different entities, whether I'm talking about a person, whether I'm talking about an animal. So let me go ahead and show you how this works by jumping into Unity. So a couple of things that you're going to have to have set up in Unity are going to be the speech recognition, which is a custom script that I created. This is going to be available in Patreon. You guys can download it. A couple of things that are important here is the API key and also the region. This is going to be where you set up your Azure cognitive service from, a speech recognition from. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And then if you go into that script, it's going to, basically this is going to give you everything that you need. But the one that is really important for the translation is going to be this method right here, which basically calls into a create translation recognizer. So this is basically placeholders and it's actually pretty straightforward. You tell it the speech translation config, what the API key and regions are going to be. Also, what language you're going to be. So it's going to be a culture, right? So in, our, in my case, it's Spanish. So it's going to be ES, ES, ES. And I can show you the, the format here. So if it was English that you were speaking, it would be ENUS if you're in the United States or ENGB if you were in Great Britain. So let's go ahead and go back into that. And once you get the config, you know, set up with the API key, the region, and also the language that you're going to be translating from, you can also tell it what target languages are going to, you're going to have. In my case, we have the drop down, so we're specifying that we're going to have three different target languages. We also are going to be, basically most of these ones are going to be handlers. So whenever the recognizing starts, you're going to have a handler. Whenever we recognize the text and we translate it, we have a, we're going to have a handler. So you can go in here and then look at some of the implementation. It's pretty straightforward. You're going to get basically an object bag, which is in this case is E. It's a translation recognizer event arguments. And as soon as that executes and if the translated, if, if we actually translated what we said, then we're going to have the results coming here. This is so that we're thread safe. So that's why they're using to make sure that, you know, while we're recognizing the text, the voice that we're, that we're telling the system, we're basically locking this because this is running on a different thread. So we have a thread locker on the very top. And then we're just basically looping through all the translations that were recognized. So again, this demo, it's just from the Azure example. So there's really, you can just copy and paste it and then you'll be able to do something very similar. So the other thing in here is this SLA U GUI, which is from the MRTK demos. You're going to be able to find that, find that out there. If you're not, let me know in the comments and I'll help you. But it basically has the three drop downs, enable translation, continuous recognition. So I could also run this on the, on the editor. So if I wanted to hit play, I have my microphone already connected. So this should work just fine. And then I'm going to hit the space key and we can go back. I'm just going to use my mouse to go back a little bit. We can move the window, you know, from right to left. We can change the, the, the language if we wanted to change the language. Let me try that again. And let me, there we go. I got to make sure that I position it in the right place. Otherwise, I won't be able to. So I can change it in here if I wanted to change it to Dutch or if I wanted to change this to Italian. And let me try Italian one more time. And there we go. Anyway, so you can do, let me go ahead and go back here. I can, the emulator is good, but you got to, you got to be very, very careful about, so it looks like it's already running, right? And that's why it's detecting. So let me go ahead and stop it. You can see that I can stop the recognizer or I can go ahead and enable translations, which is why you couldn't see any of the translations. 
And we have German, German. Let's go ahead and do something cooler. So we can do Chinese, German, and French. And we can do continue recognition. I'm gonna adjust the window, maybe. There we go. That angle is better. So you can see that it is translating. Some of the, the Chinese Mandarin, the, the encoding is different, so it doesn't translate that. And that's a text issue, it's not more of, a, of an issue here. But, hola amigos, como están? Como les va? You can see that it, it is recognizing Spanish and it is translating that information into Spanish. So, so you'll have a speech manager, which is the script that I, that I show you. This is just placeholders for MRTK, it's very common. And then the GUI. The other thing that you're gonna need is going to be the, the speech SDK. And this, I'm gonna be putting the link in the description. This is actually a Unity SDK for the, for the speech service. And the cool thing with this is, you know, you can do everything in, in Unity and there's really no wrappers that you need to create. If you go in here, you're gonna see that my using statements are using the Microsoft Cognitive Speech. And if we do here, you're gonna see that you're gonna have access to basically the SDK that has all the wrappers to, to talk to Azure. Okay, so now that you have that and we looked at the, the keys that you're gonna need, what are some of the things that you're gonna need to in order for you to get this set up? So it's actually pretty easy if we go, let me go ahead and go back here. And you're gonna see that I have a speech XR. This is the cognitive services. And all you need to do really, I already set it up, but once you set it up, it's gonna give you an endpoint. I'm also using the, the pricing tier, which is free. This is gonna give you five hours of voice. If you don't wanna use this one, I believe it's about $2.45 per hour of voice that you're translating. And it also has another perk. So I'm using the free version, it gives me everything that I need. And then, so you'll need on the keys, you're gonna need, you can do either key one or key two, and then the location where your service is going to be located. So if you go in here, I'm using 641, and then, so if you look at this, this is this key, and then basically that service. And this is really powerful because you can look at, you know, all the requests that are coming in. It just gives you a lot of, a lot of information. As far as pricing, these are some of the prices that I was telling you about. I'm using the free version, which gives you access to speech to text, text to speech, a speech translation. And this is five audio hours per month, which is enough for me to do a demo and to try it out in the HoloLens. Or if you wanna get a container, you can also, you know, you can pay for that. And the price of that is going to be 250 per audio hour. You can also, you know, there's really other services and it can add up, but I mean, for the most part, this is really powerful, right? We, we need to have services like this. And I didn't think we could do this today. So this is pretty amazing. So the last thing that I wanna show you is some of the capabilities that you'll need to enable in this project in order for you to access a microphone and also the LAN and also, so private network and also the internet client server. This needs to be enabled because we're communicating with Azure, also this one and also private network client server and the microphone. So just make sure that you have those. I also have this casual perception, which I don't really need. I don't think I need for this example. Actually I do because I wanted to put that, I wanted to put the window on the wall. So anyways, these are some of the settings that I have enabled in the example. And this is everything that I wanted to show you. This is gonna be available in Patreon. So if you guys have any questions about it, make sure that you let me know in the comments. Make sure that you subscribe because it's going to help me in bringing you more videos. And again, available in Patreon, you can get it today with the early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.